Welcome, I'm Vox Machina and today we'll talk a little bit about a common debate amongst analog synth players, analog synth lovers that I would like to call as How many octaves does it track? Pitch perfection seems to be what we want, yet we keep looking for that warm analog sound but what is that analog sound and what does pitch perfection or perfect tuning has to do with it or against it? So when dealing with analog synthesizers or other synthesizers, we deal with this kind of standard. There are a couple of standards called one volt per octave. One volt per octave simply means that we use one volt for every 12 notes. It is a system that Mook came up in the early days because as he was building the synthesizers, he wanted a more traditional approach on how to interact with them. So we had to come with a way to map electricity to somehow notes and so he basically decided that every one divided by 12 of a volt will belong on a certain note so you start defining what notes map to what voltage value that means that for every one volt that we increased on the input it means that the output frequency will go up by one octave modular systems are controlled by voltage and right from the start this creates anomalies in two different areas at least. Power supply will affect all the models that you have on your rack or all the components that you have on your synthesizer. And given what comes out of our wall, we actually need to drop down the voltage coming in to a smaller amount to be useful for our modular system, for our synthesizer. Right here, entropy starts, right? And if you live in a place like me where electricity has a temper here in Thailand, uh, you can imagine how that will reflect on your system. There are great power supplies and mechanisms to make it more stable that I've seen, but still, we are, in the end, we are all dependent on what's coming out of our wall. So it won't be perfect. It won't be 100% perfect, never, when dealing with analog uh, circuits. On top of this, pitch is not linear, it's exponential. Why? Well, that's another video and story, but in short, it has to do with how we perceive sound, uh, and it's also related a little bit to music theory uh, but mostly because our ear is good when it comes to relative changes as opposed to absolute changes but anyway that will be a long story for now uh, what you need to understand and know is that we want if we want musical pitch or a good tuning we need to convert and map what coming what's coming on an input which is a linear which is linear to a pitch output that is exponential. So linear voltage coming in, exponential voltage coming out. So this is yet another area, the second where many problems, many variations can occur in an analog world. And this philosophical question, <laughs> it actually came to myself uh, when I was designing and building Tomium Analog VCO, uh, which is a VCO analog that you can build uh, on your own. I'll just leave the links in the description. It's an open source project. But me, myself, I was looking to achieve this perfection. I got a little bit obsessed, actually. I was looking into how I could make it even more stable across more octaves, testing different temperature control mechanisms. And, you know, I live in Thailand where you cannot survive without air conditioning. And at the same time, it's 30 degrees now at night and you have your window open. <laughs> <laughs> so temperature is never going to be linear in this room at least. And then I remembered why in the first place I wanted to start building my own uh, instruments. In this case I'm starting with Aerorack modules. One of the reasons at least because these new modern instruments uh, on this specific case modern, modern oscillators on an Aerorack system are close to perfection in tuning, amazing features all over the place, phase modulation, true zero FM modulation and I use this oscillator that I have which is really good it has a lot of features on its own and after a while it started to demotivating me from making music with it which is super weird right and as I was questioning myself in this process I looking back I realized that it was sounding cold to me somehow you know I already knew it that if I would use a sequencer I'll get a good melody out of it and you can make very complex patches with this model. It's an amazing model. I will never let it go because the design is amazing, of course. But I just don't love the way it sounds. It's almost like too perfect in a way. 
too predictable it comes, I think, even with so many features, maybe, for me. And this is a very personal opinion, of course, uh, and that it sounded too cold, as if it was too perfect. It's a very personal, individual thing, what we're looking for, right? And it's funny, because often I would find myself patching my Aerorack system, and I was actually making the patch in a way to make it less perfect. I was using an LFO to detune more an oscillator, for example, which is a bit counterintuitive. If you're looking to have a warm analog sound and using this perfect oscillator and then you're patching it to correct this perfection. So instead of allowing me to focus on creating, it was more provoking me in the way of sound design, which I also like to do, of course. But even when it comes to sound design, if the sound is too perfect, in my personal opinion, or too cold, uh, I feel like I will never be really happy with it. It's funny, right? Uh, it's a personal feeling. Maybe this video will just be to myself. <laughs> I don't think so. Honestly, I see many people discussing online. Uh, I see these patterns that I used to have, right? When looking for an oscillator. Uh, I also would, would ask, hey, is this analog oscillator stable across this many octaves? It didn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me now, honestly. Maybe it makes sense to you. Fair enough. Maybe it will make sense to me on a certain day, on a certain week, and I will want a perfect oscillator. But for that, I feel like I would prefer to buy a digital one. There are amazing digital oscillators out there, or digital models, digital synthesizers. I think digital is making a comeback again, no? It's amazing products out there now. Anyway, the point being that I was confused, right? I can have both, right? But I was trying to find something in one that belongs in the other. So converting voltage to move up or down exponentially is quite a challenge and it's quite impossible using analog components to be 100% perfect, I would say. But isn't exactly this why we love analog synths? Isn't this part of the warm sound that we love? It's funny because some modern synths will have this detune option as you get two oscillators out of tune. Just think that somewhere somebody was bored of this synthesizer sound or instrument sound <laughs> and just started moving along some knobs and by accident found out that by detuning two oscillators we'll get this warmer, bigger, fatter sound and the super song was born. Now I'm going to play a sequence. I'm using a make noise, a zero control analog sequencer, which doesn't have any kind of quantizer or quantization. It simply sends electricity. It simply sends zero to five volts as an output. So let's hear how it sounds. So I'll just mess with the knobs and let myself go a little bit and tune to the sound that I like, not thinking about a note, not thinking about a scale, not thinking about getting a nice, a nice, pleasurable melody, um, but this is me again, this is what I like to do. I don't even care what's the voltage or what is the note, I just let myself go into the sound and move around until I find something that I like. And sometimes I will start like this with the melody, or other times I will start with sound design, but the approach is the same for me. In the end, I want to get this analog warm sound anyway. Sounding good to me. I wonder if my neighbors are enjoying it as me. <laughs> so of course what we like, what we enjoyed, of course it's a preference and personal. It's emotional and very specific to every individual. So I'm not judging here. I'm just curious to hear and see more and more people like I was getting concerned with getting perfect pitch, perfect tuning, on this case specifically on Aerorack, modular synthesizers, analog modules, and basically everywhere else uh, on any kind of instrument. While at the same time, the same people that are looking for that warm analog sound, I mean, there are even synth emulations that will copycat and emulate this pitch variation through time. Which is a fair option, I mean, nothing against digital or analog or hybrid, it's up to you what you enjoy. I was confused, 
my life is now solved. Everything is solved now. <laughs> As I look to recent released models, I see designers trying to reach perfection, making the most clean and perfect sounding oscillator. Not all of them, of course. With all the infinite possibilities added in there, I have one myself, like I mentioned, and for some reason, just like many, I got excited about this oscillator, this specific one, analog, perfect tracking, uh, within a 6-7 octave range maybe, and so many possibilities of sound design. It's, it's an amazing model, by the way, nothing against it, but it's funny because after some time it simply started to sound boring to me. Maybe it's just me, that's okay. After time, you know, after playing and playing months with it, uh, I feel the lack of a personality. And I think that's what, at least for me, what I love about analog instruments in general, the personality that comes with it. It turns them alive, it turns them human, and thus they become an extension of myself, faulty and imperfect, just like me. And maybe that's why we create this strong connection between instrument and individual. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching my philosophical uh, questions to myself. <laughs> I hope it was somehow entertaining, at least for you. I'm just gonna jam here a little bit. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.